good evening ladies and gentlemen this is sake pathan director tps uh, tiger production society uh, we all welcome you uh, on this uh, fantastic event on the occasion of international tigers day uh, so let me brief you about tiger production society so tiger production society is based in bangalore founded in 2010 by young wildlife enthusiasts and was registered a society in 2011 uh, our primary focus was on the flagship species tigers how in return helps to conserve the entire wildlife and their landscapes talking about tigers uh, tiger which is uh, which requires no introduction and it's our national animal so the tiger panthera tigris is the largest among all the uh, living wild cats of the family philidae the big cat is a critical part of ecosystem and the cultures the big cat is being trapped and it's been trafficked for various purposes and pushed out of its home by protecting large uh, biological diverse uh, landscapes we allow tigers to roam and preserve and many more other threatened species that live there so tigers being you know the top of the ecosystem um, if we preserve tigers it's like preserving uh, the ecosystem so today on 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 this expert talk we have uh, dr anish anderia hello sir good evening hi sakib uh, thank you for having me looking forward to this conversation Yeah, so it's a pleasure to have, and uh, you know, uh, thanks for having a time for us on on your tight schedule. So let us uh, let me brief you through uh, what Dr. Anish Anderia is in 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 the world of uh, wildlife conservation. He is a very known face, and he requires no introduction. Dr. Anish Anderia is the president of Wildlife Conservation Trust, WCT. Uh, he is a member of several government committees, including the National Tiger Conservation Authority, the State Board of Wildlife of Maharashtra. and jammu and kashmir and the executive committee of the gujarat state lion conservation society he has been awarded the prestigious kalzai conservation award in 2008 and the uaa institute of chemical technology distinguished alumnus award in 2017 uh, he has helped set up kids for tigers a nationwide conservation education that reached out to the quarter million school children every year after completing his phd from institute of chemical technology mumbai Uh, he went on uh, he went on to pursue masters in wildlife biology and conservation from ncbs bangalore uh, he is the large uh, he's a large carnivore biologist with immense knowledge on predator prey relationship he is a part of organizing committee of the indian climate collaborative member of the governing Cons uh, council of bnhs member of the impact advisory board of rain tree foundation among others a professional wildlife photographer of repute his images served as an uh archival record of the wildlife and wilderness of india he has also co-authored two books on indian wildlife so it was it's it's again a pleasure sir to have you and uh, you know to kick start what is your insight when it comes to tiger conservation because you know you have been working in this for decades now uh, so what is the most important thing that is uh, that that is required in today's scenario when we talk about india as a whole so sakib uh I don't think of tiger conservation in isolation of uh, sec securing river systems, of conservation of uh, human livelihoods and law and order. So, in fact, mm -hmm. tigers are symbol for life on earth. The Project Tiger that was launched in India in 1973 has been mm -hmm. one of the most successful conservation projects on earth, and. Okay. Uh, the it's very simple to understand that by protecting tigers you are trying to secure india's uh, river systems so okay. tigers live in very many states they are to be specific found in 18 states of india they are found from snow in snow areas snowy areas to um, mangrove forest of west bengal to right. the evergreen forests of western ghats to the central deccan plateau and also the dry areas of rajasthan so they are found in different habitats by by wanting to conserve this large carnivore mm -hmm. the government had to conserve large forests and right. by conserving this large forest they knew that they will be able to conserve the catchment of life giving rivers nearly okay. 600 rivers either originate from or are fed by tiger bearing forests so tiger conservation actually is helping millions of people to earn a livelihood all the fishermen who are dependent on fish not only in the rivers but also in the sea are benefited from mm -hmm. tiger conservation if india's forest had dwindled 
okay by now you would have had a law and order situation in the country because there would be so much poverty we are already facing abject poverty because of various reasons but on top of it if there was no forest left mm -hmm. and india is largely an agrarian community we would have had yes. catastrophe at our hands and when poor people have nowhere to go is when uh, it is quite likely that out of complete compulsion they uh, there can be law and order situation in the country so i look at tiger conservation as a way of stabilizing not only the ecosystem but also the 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 human uh, hab, you know uh, the human habitations because without forest india with 1. nearly 1.4 billion people uh, we would have been facing very very acute water and livelihood crisis okay so it's not only the ecosystem but the human species are also dependent somewhere or the other because of uh, tigers and and they serve in conserving the humans uh, so we conserving tigers is like we conserving ourselves right so ladies and gentlemen we have a beautiful uh, presentation made by dr amish andheria on uh, wildlife conservation so like if i can please request you to start your screen sharing so that you know we can uh, see what's there here yeah, you sir. go sir Over to you. yeah yeah so uh, as i have already explained that the rationale for tiger conservation uh, the title of this presentation can change to rationale for river conservation or to rationale for conservation of human life in india and not a single slide in this presentation will change so it's synonymous tigers are synonymous with forests forests are synonymous with water and water is life so as you can see india is a magical land we are blessed with um, so many beautiful mountain ranges starting from the himalayas up in the north without the himalayas india will not have a healthy monsoon season without monsoon we will not have predictability in rain without that we will not have the agriculture output that we need to support such large, large human population uh then you have the aravallis you have the vindhyan range on the right of uh, the himalayas you see the dry forest uh, that's the aravalli mountains uh, they are they extend all the way from delhi and all the way to ranthambore uh, and then you have in the uh, just below the aravallis you can see uh, the satpura range which is runs right across uh, the center of india uh, largely in madhya pradesh and to the left of satpura is the western ghats western ghats everybody knows is one of the most biodiverse hot spots on earth uh, there are so many endemic species by by endemic i mean species that are not found anywhere else but in western ghats um, it's it's extremely beautiful and it extends all the way from gujarat to kerala uh, so without these mountains india will not have good quality monsoon so we are fortunate to have these um and we already know that forests and rivers are interlinked very very deeply linked and they are responsible for uh, producing the forest are the birthplace for rivers there are i would say i have already mentioned but there would be so many more rivers that originate from mountain ranges and the forest across the country so we used to when i used to run the kids for tigers program we would ask the children to say jungle nadi ki maa hai that is the forest is a mother of the river every day as as they uh, woke up uh, these forests are extremely beautiful they they play so many roles they provide so many services we call those services ecosystem services services that you and i are getting from the forest free of cost what are those i am just listing a few but there are i would say several more rain water of course we all know that rain is connected with forest and the quality of forest conservation of soil if there was no forest when it rains the soil will get washed away all our dams will get silted uh, there will be hardly any agriculture possible because the top soil will get washed away forest also play a very big role of regulating temperature it also recharges atmospheric oxygen green plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen they also supply genetic seeds which means 
uh, all those rice we uh, mangoes wheat and so many other grains that we consume and the world consumes there are more than 7 billion people on earth and they we are all dependent on food grain lot of their original grains come from the forest so any agriculture produce that you see the evolution of that agriculture product the original seed came from our forest and they continue to come so every time there is a disease that wipes off huge tracts of agriculture the scientists go and search for a related species in the forest so that they can cross breed them and find and create species that are immune to that disease they also mitigate climate change because they are absorbing carbon dioxide they are actually reducing the amount of uh, carbon related or fuel related pollution that human beings are creating apart from this forests are able to uh, also provide pollination service so many butterflies birds mammals are pollinating uh, trees they are also pollinating our crops nearly 30 to 35% of all the crops that all the food that we eat vegetables fruits they are still pollinated by wild insects bees wasps butterflies and so on and so forth so if the forest goes those species will go and our crops will start failing germination so many seeds are germinate are are, are spread so it's called uh, dispersal of seeds so uh, some insects pollinate the others feed on fruits and then they move birds fly hundreds of kilometers sometimes bats do the same in the night they cover large tracts of land and then through their excreta those seeds are sprinkled all throughout so there are i can keep going and uh, going on and on talking about the benefits it's not just the wood the rubber that we learned in the school wood of course helps but that's that's just the a, a much smaller benefit from the forest actually we are uh, if we measure the ecosystem services from a forest it will it will run into trillions of dollars and who planted this forest it was not us it was not the government it is not human beings human beings may have played a small role like any other species would but the forest and other terrestrial ecosystems are planted by animals so when you talk of a forest or an ecosystem or a biodiverse system you are not just talking about trees you are automatically talking about every single animal that is found in that forest from the microbes and the fungal fungus in the soil to the birds to the bees to insects to uh, uh, mammals to reptiles uh, doves that you see in the photo are uh, they disperse seeds butterflies pollinate flowers different mammals perform different roles birds perform different roles it also supports so many other uh endangered species the lion tail macaque only found in india in three states uh, kerala karnataka tamil nadu only in the evergreen forests so if those forests goes this charismatic species will go magar or marsh crocodile found river, in rivers and lakes nowhere else you need to conserve the river systems if you want to conserve this um, i would say they provide a free of cost municipality service by cleaning our rivers black buck very uh, graceful one of the fastest running mammals on earth is found in the grassland so with every ecosystem you have different species and tiger conservation influences many of these ecosystems so by wanting to conserve tigers you are automatically conserving so many other ecosystems which are benefiting all these animals uh, obviously there are other co predators with tigers the leopards uh, you have lions you have other small cats india is uh, so biodiverse that it has 15 wild cat species three large cats which is tiger uh, leopard and lion and then 12 other small cats and that is possible because of the kind of biodiversity we have uh, tigers of course is uh, tigers are very famous they are very charismatic and therefore they are uh, they are the symbol for conservation but tigers when you next whenever you hear about the tiger whenever anybody talks about tiger conservation you should know that they are not just talking about tiger but they are talking about the entire ecosystem because in many of our forests there are people who live there are so many tribal communities there are so many forest dwelling communities who have been living in these forests for hundreds of years if these forests go these communities who are dependent on the forest directly will have no place to go 
and they if they come to the cities they will not be able to survive because they will not be able to compete with educated people so you can imagine that uh, uh, the life of wild animals and also millions of people who live in the forest are deeply uh, connected with the forest so forest conservation which means tiger conservation is not just about the forest but also about the people who live in those forests and who are dependent on the forest like people uh, like us who are sitting in the cities but we are still drinking water which is coming from uh, forests 150 years ago india was still extremely green there was still lot of rivers and good connected large forest tracts but all that has changed uh, uh, in the past we had very deep rooted connection with forest with water but all that has slowly gone uh, in by 1910 uh, uh, india already had only 40000 tigers left there were times when there were more than two and a half times uh, that population uh, but tigers had been hunted down by the british they continued to do that uh, uh, till they left the country and after that the indians continued to hunt them and therefore by 1970s only 1800 tigers were left and that number uh, is doubtful because at that point there was no scientific study it was being done through pug marks so i am pretty sure that there may not be even 1000 tigers uh, in the 1970s so the tiger population just between 1910 and 70 came down drastically from 40000 to just uh, i would say under 1000 uh, that's when uh, our late uh, prime minister mrs indira gandhi launched what is called project tiger in 1973 uh, and also in 1972 she launched what is called the wildlife protection act of india between the wildlife protection act uh, the project tiger and another act called the forest conservation act which was launched in 1980 these three instruments together have been solely responsible for the conservation of biodiversity in the country because before that uh, hunting uh, was legal from 1972 onwards hunting of all species and also logging of all uh, most of the tree species was banned so and as i said the strategy strategy was simple to save tigers you have to save its food you cannot save its food that is deer Uh, without saving the forest and if you save the forest automatically you will save uh, water you will save uh, so many different animals like the deer insects arachnids that is spiders mites and also large mammals like elephant so tiger conservation was then used as an instrument to save the forest and also save the river systems as i have already told you uh, so many rivers either originate or are fed by tiger forest uh, some of those uh, well known park like cobet rajaji dudwa play a big role in the water that ganges has in it similarly if you look at all the the tiger reserves cobet kana melghat kasiranga indravati bandipur these are different tiger reserves and from each of them not only one several rivers and uh, tributaries are originating so uh, i don't want to repeat again but you know the connection between water and tigers now so the tigers bounced back there were very few breeding females left but because of protection given awarded to the forest tigers bounced back and uh, people started seeing tigers in uh, 80s uh, soon uh, however indira gandhi was assassinated with it we lost the political will to protect wildlife we still don't have a political leader as such who 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 wants to protect um, the forest as much as human beings so she was a real i would say a hero when it comes to conservation with her uh, death we lost that support and wildlife again started going through a tremendously difficult time till about uh, the year 2000 to 2005 so after the mid 80s tiger populations again started going down and in fact uh, the forests also uh, you know although because, because of the, pro- the various acts there were instruments available to stop degradation of forest however meanwhile the populations went up even till date population of india has is growing rapidly with so many mouths to feed there is no option but for poor people to depend on the forest so the livelihoods of millions of people uh, is still dependent on the forest and because of that uh, the forests are getting damaged on the other hand uh, to improve uh, livelihood options to develop the country requires infrastructure 
So a lot of roads, railways, canal systems, electricity lines are being built. And between the daily subsistence needs of people and the developmental needs of the country, we are continuously damaging the forest even today. Uh, because of all the degradation of the forest, because of all the infrastructure that we are building in the forest, uh, tigers and other animals are uh, under tremendous pressure from poaching. Uh, fortunately, in India, there is no market for tiger skin bones. And uh, actually, there is, hardly, there is no market for illegal wildlife trade as such. You and I cannot go and buy any animal body part or a live animal as pet in India. Uh, so it's all completely bland. No turtle, uh, not even fish that is found in uh, in India in our river systems can be kept as pets in, in your houses. Forget about the tiger. So snakes, spiders, lizards, turtles, many species of birds. Any person found in possessing these can, eat, can be put behind bars and there is severe fine. So if you see anybody having any wild animal that belongs to India, you should actually report them or at least request them not to keep them because uh, the pressure of poaching or pressure of removal of wildlife is tremendous because there is demand. If the demand goes, then the pressure on wildlife will go down. Uh, however, uh, as I said, India, the market is low in terms of wildlife body parts, but there is huge market in South Asia and Southeast Asia, China, Vietnam, and so many other countries uh, Middle East, uh, also in Europe, there are people who still like to have uh, tiger trophies, which means or uh, you know stuffed animals from the wild. So hunters keep pumping money into poor communities, and because of the poverty, uh, some of the villagers participate in hunting and poaching, and that is taking severe toll. Another issue is of conflict because of degradation of forest. Animals are coming in touch with people. People are getting scared. Uh, tigers start feeding on cattle. And as a result, the poor uh, uh, you know, shepherd, because it cannot, he, he cannot uh, withstand the loss because of death of a cow or a buffalo to tiger, they will go and poison them. And the entire family of tigers can die. Uh, the roads that cut through our forest are killing leopards, tigers, and so many millions of frogs, snakes, other insects every year. Those big highways are killing millions of butterflies on a daily basis. Whenever you go on a uh, highway, you will see insects constantly hitting your windscreens. A lot of them are butterflies. And because they plant uh, uh, flowering plants on the divider, but butterflies get attracted there and then they're killed by the car. So this is how... The scenario was uh, about 100 years ago. Uh, all the yellow is where tigers were found. And now in 2020, 2021, uh, what is left is this orange, which means most of the tiger habitat, 93% of the habitat of the tiger doesn't have any tiger left now. There are nine subspecies of tigers, of which the ones marked in red are already extinct. So they have gone from the wild. You don't have tigers in Java, Bali. You don't have the Caspian tiger. You also have lost the South China tiger recently. So out of the nine subspecies, only five subspecies survive. However, it is appalling to know that um, despite having five subspecies, the total number of tigers on Earth is less than 4,500. And India has done exceedingly well by protecting uh, the forest in the name of tiger and by through project tiger so we have more than 70 percent of all tigers on earth so india has a population of around around 3000 adult tigers whereas the remaining 12 uh, countries there are tigers found in 13 countries the remaining 12 countries together uh, have less than 1500 tigers in them and those countries are big some of them are bigger than india indonesia is a huge country then China, Malaysia, Russia, uh, there are so many other countries, Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh, all these countries have tigers, but India has, still has 70% of all tigers. Uh, adult tigers need lands, uh, big lands, they travel to large areas, they disperse in different habitats, and that's where it's important to conserve these habitats. Um, there is anthropogenic pressure on habitats. This is a 
submergence area which means a dam was built because of which the water level rose and the forest uh, had to be cut initially and now this becomes a a, a lake uh, during monsoon this is during the dry season so you see this dead trees but this is basically because of development because the requirement of water is so high that forests are degraded there are so many threats to tigers as i said poaching is one but poaching of their prey so this uh, animal that you see below the tiger who is trapped in a jaw trap if you see his foot is stuck in that metal uh, that below that is a hare deer a hare monkeys they also get uh, hunted many of that for subsistence which means people are eating those in several states of india then there is habitat loss because of uh, uh, fire the habitat loss because of grazing millions india has the highest number of uh, cattle because of grazing pressure uh, the forest is also being uh, degraded because of fuel wood con consumption so many millions of people dependent on the forest uh, are going into the forest to cut wood so that they can cook food then there is road canals railways and electric lines and they whenever they cut through the forest obviously forest land is diverted and because it goes through the forest it adds lot of disturbance and more people can get access to the forest this is also one of the main reasons why a virus like covid-19 has uh, hit the world the virus has come from wild animals and also because there is trade in wildlife and also because the forest is degraded so that people can penetrate deeper into the jungle there is also a pressure through retaliatory killing i told you when a tiger kills cattle the shepherd will go and poison the cattle when the tiger comes to feed on the cattle the tiger will die now a new method of killing tigers is evolving where they lay a electric line tap the overhead lines or power lines and they electrocute uh, wild animals forest fire are all man made and they are also a big big threat to the forest so india has 52 tiger reserves at this point in time but area under those 52 tiger reserves is just 2.4% of the geographical area of india uh, 30000 families are living inside the core of the tiger reserves and another 100 million people are still uh, dependent on the tiger reserve 3 million people are living inside the buffer zones of india's tiger reserve so tiger reserve uh, for most people is a place where which is earmarked for protection of wildlife but that's not true 3 million people live inside those so even those forests are being dis disturbed by the country uh, the forest cover is 21% uh, however if if you add all the national parks and sanctuaries of india uh, this figure is outdated so ignore this number but currently we have around 900 protected areas and the area under those 900 protected area is just over 5% of india so um, despite having nearly 900 small patches under protection the overall area of uh, well protected forest is just 5% of the country and you need nearly 33% of good quality forest to support 1.4 billion people so that all of us can have a good lifestyle but because we have such few forests left you have such huge inequity where there is a big gap between the rich and the poor so if you have good quality forest there is going to be enough resources for even the poor to have a good life uh, so i think uh, what is important is to understand this particular uh, diagram it means that in the center you see that if there are if there are healthy forests you will have healthy river systems and to have uh, and to have tigers and elephants so if you, if your aim if your objective is to have a good number of tiger and elephants in the jungle you have to have healthy forest and so for in the name of tiger in the name of elephant in the name of other species if we are able to protect these forests you are automatically going to protect the rivers if you protect the rivers you will have prosperous communities and you will by default fight climate change so it is it is a one um, just so one conservation strategy can actually bring about a big change uh, in the entire ecosystem we are where human beings are an integral part of so with this i would like to end my presentation and i'll be very very happy to take questions thank you thank you dr anish it was a fantastic session and you know it you you tried and put in a light on how beautifully uh, uh, tigers and elephants and rivers and biodiversity and every every person is a stakeholder 
uh, when it comes to uh, you know uh, preserving the ecosystem and also the natives and the education and you know what are the conflicts about it so uh, if 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 we can just go around and uh, take few questions that can help us to understand more insights and more about what wct has done and all the other conservationists all the all the societies would do so can we go for our first question yes um, more than happy okay. to do so you know the first question that i would like to ask you is um, what are the challenges faced in wildlife uh, conservation by biologists and ngos by and large if you can just well, I, i'm sure there would be so many challenges because it's something filled with challenges but you know if you have to name a few so what are the main things that you have to go through so first is to um, most important challenge now with covid looming large also is funding lot of right. uh, biologist uh, and uh, especially con uh, all the ngos are finding it damn difficult to raise money uh, okay. money raising was always difficult fund raising was always difficult even before covid but covid uh, what has happened is most corporates are also trying to support health related issues now because obviously that is the need of the hour as a result the money that were allocated for wildlife projects have also been taken away the government also uh, in fact uh, there is a budget cut of the forest department so they are only getting 40% of the funds that were allocated to them so when this kind of scenario i think uh, fundraising is becoming extremely difficult so that's one second is uh, the aspirations of people no there are so many i would say of 1.4 billion people in india and uh, because right. there are so many uh, people who are below poverty line and poor mm -hmm. uh, they obviously aspire to have earn more money right so that aspiration right. drives consumption uh, at the village level and uh, right. so that is small amount of consumption but large number of families right for okay. family consumption right. is hardly anything in the village so that mm -hmm. is driving degradation because poor people have nothing else but you know so they have to depend on the forest and on the other side the city is where it is the economy which is driving where people who have enough want even more so their consumption in and in terms of per capita has gone up so ngos are finding it very difficult to a work with governments because fund is not there b uh with communities how can you tell the communities not to uh, you know disturb the forest when the cities are right. actually the bigger threat to nature because inefficient cities everybody wanting suvs everybody having multiple flats build people wanting farm houses and therefore buying land in the forest area all that is driving it so um those together i think the two of those uh, there are many many other things but these two i would rate as the top two right sir right sir and uh, uh, going ahead with you know in similar lines that you know how can on on the other hand you know on the positive side how can our urban crowd help uh, in contribute to wildlife conservation because as you said by and large that you know uh, companies are finding it real difficult because of covid situation and it's it's true that we are into great liquidity liquidity crunch and financial crisis uh, globally as well as nationally um our gdp has dropped to anything so you know uh, when you don't find it so the priority wise also i don't think there would be so many other problems for government so the wildlife would have shifted from you know the priority above to below at this particular time so how can we as you know the urban crowd can help in contribute to this thing so that you know our our conservationists and ngos work swiftly so i think first we must uh, look for crowd funding uh so people okay. should uh, you don't need big monies what you need is so india think if say a bombay alone has 20 million people right right, right. so a city like bombay has 20 million delhi has in fact 22 million bangalore also has uh, a, a large population if all of them even contributed 5 rupees na they can contribute 5 rupees a day can you imagine how right. much money that will be and right. that uh, obviously i'm just this is a hypothetical situation but what i'm saying is it's not too much of contribution and money is one but it is small money so you have to as individuals try and understand who is doing good work try and support them and if you are running an industry rather than supporting it as an industry because you may be uh, incurring losses but if you tell your employees to set aside 100 rupees every month and right. then at the end of the year if you have 10 5000 employees you can imagine the kind of money that you will be able the to multiply so factor yeah. this is the time where 
individuals have to start pumping in we can't just keep uh, blaming our employees we can't just keep blaming the government because there are real financial issues not only in india even america who is so many uh, many times the currency is powerful more than 70 times yet right. they are still going through huge crisis right so that's one but other than that also while we don't we need money we meaning uh, the conservation sector but right. if we if at all there is no money even then individuals can contribute because i feel uh, that every minute in our life we make choices i keep mm-hmm. saying that all choices have to be made in a informed manner why you want two vehicles why you want to uh, buy a farmhouse right in the corridor where tigers and elephants are moving why right. do you want to buy 10 jeans when you ca- you know need only two why are you buying a pair of shoes that is made out of non biodegradable when there are shoes that are made up of biodegradable stuff or recycled plastic there are shoes made out of recycled plastic which is not bad right. for the skin also so all that testing is done so those kind of so use less use what is needed uh, uh try and conserve uh, environment by doing activities for instance in every household uses soap to clean utensils every day we also use soap in washing machines there are now brands available where the soap is biodegradable which means it is slightly more expensive but all the soap that we are pumping into our drain system which ends up either in the sea if you are in the coastal city or it ends up into the river system and that destroys yeah. the ecosystem completely plus are in bangalore if you uh, you know how many water bodies are there if all those water bodies are going to get Uh, you know pollution. there are lakes there are lakes that are catching fire that's the right. kind of pollution that you have so pani mein aag lagti hai so exactly. every individual household if they move from uh, chemicals that they're using to environment friendly things uh, that itself is a huge contribution i will i mean talking about electricity reduction of water usage everybody talks about it i will also have to repeat it because it is not a joke most of our water as i told you through my presentation comes from the jungle Right. jungles are degrading which means the amount of water that is coming out is reducing or because of climate change the flood intensity is so much that instead of raining for 3 um, months it rains the same amount in 1 month so one when month, yeah. the volume of water falling down doesn't reduce but the length of the monsoon is reduced the mm-hmm. water doesn't get enough time to be absorbed by soil because it flows away as flood that all ends up in the sea so eventually your river dries because there is no water for the ground water to done. release yeah. so yeah. that which means the uh, surface water is constantly reducing and our consumption is gone up so i'll give you a statistics that our population has tripled in the last uh, 60 70 years the world population in the last 70 years has become three times three okay times. but the requirement for water has gone up six times right Right? it should be in proportion which should be only three times but it has gone uh-huh. up six times so it has it has twice ha huh. but the capacity of the ecosystem to generate water has halved yeah. so okay. amount of water that the ecosystem was generating was twice our requirement was whatever now it's six times more but the amount of water is less can you imagine because the flood water even the dam cannot control na see so many floods all that is going into the river and getting into the sea so See, that yeah. water is fallen now the amount of water available in the sky is limited you cannot have it's not like it's keep it's going to keep raining you will now see that the monsoon will end in august instead exactly. of september so then your uh, suddenly by march next year you will have no water in the lakes because the capacity of the lakes also gets uh, filled up because of silting so mm-hmm. uh, individual choices are important have a greener life don't buy what is not required try and reuse whatever you can clothes everything you buy give it away to people don't dump it so all those things which are how our indian culture was we have somehow adopted this western culture of throwing disposing we need to go back to our roots and understand how our ancestors used to live in india and that is good enough india i would say can be a role model for the planet if we stick to our culture and our culture was always interwoven with nature exactly and some of we have been drifted because of westernization
and so uh, when you when you talk about uh, uh, you know this crowdfunding and people coming up and you know trying uh, to donate small amounts but you know uh, in volume you know la uh, by and large uh, so how important is education and awareness in this matter because uh, we as a, a people who are city seekers or urban population uh, do you really think that you know conservation and wildlife is 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 our point of discussion or maybe you know we as friends will sit down in cafeteria and talk about tiger conservation and elephant conservation it doesn't happen on a day to day basis so to you know it's it's basically out of sight is out of mind so uh, how can awareness and conservation in awareness and conservation go hand in hand and what do ngos and biologists and conservationists has to do so that you know we we it becomes you know a point of discussion so once we keep on discussing i think we can solve this problem on a greater level so yeah, do you should... think we are we are we are we are missing that aspect <clears throat> we are missing and the role of common man has to go up common man is getting into a habit of blaming the government all the time <coughs> exactly um uh, they are not doing this they are not they are cutting the forest what are you doing you still having instead of one air conditioner you have three air conditioners in your house you are still doing everything <clears throat> which is injurious to the environment but you will want the government to give you subsidies you will want the government to you know uh, protect the environment not possible your consumption goes up they'll have to build more dams and these okay. dams are going to be built in the forest because where you can't build a dam in the city you need a river the river is flowing in the forest the dam will come that will submerge land so you will consume and then force the government to have more dams and then you blame the government for destroying the forest so it's all connected they have to Doesn't understand happen. so every individual is equally responsible our votes are all one government one vote my vote one tigers vote one right that's how we have to live, look at life that will change the perspective so you will start saying when they say no you point fingers at others actually most other fingers are pointing at you it's a it's a fact so that is important and awareness is the most important thing i believe because the next generation no should know uh we are already on the way out and uh, <clears throat> uh we have already destroyed because we were unaware when we were growing up there was not much understanding now over the last 30 40 years lot of knowledge about nature has gone up we know climate change why it is happening right. we know how right. we can solve it so we know the causes we know the solutions in the past people don't didn't even accept that there was climate change right so now at least we know climate change we know why it is happening we know that it is a global problem we know that just india coming doing things may not be enough or just america uh, doing it fighting for it and india can live like india is living not enough so every country has to fall in place there is enough knowledge today that if we stop all research on nature we would still know enough to save uh, people and wildlife right so right. awareness continuous awareness will help because the next generation needs to grow up in hope otherwise kya hota hai when you are in a bad situation and when you know that you cannot recover then you will also join the destruction because you will say and oh, now this is not going to change let me enjoy what what is there you know it's like that so from that hopeless feeling to have hope that hope is the most important thing most important and we need thing. to give hope to the children so awareness for grown ups is okay but more than that youngsters not only in school but at college level what happens is in school there is lot of uh, awareness building exercise but the moment people right. school kids go to the college they just uh, are not connected now because they uh, are not involved in any activities there is no uh, clear cut curriculum or or uh, a, uh, you know a schedule for them so we need to involve children of all ages i would say till you are about 20 years old you have to be bombarded by this because then your choices will be different why would you have a wedding and call 2000 people on a playground come in a helicopter uh, you know do all those things waste so much food if you yeah. the same person who has the money uh, from childhood if he or she was bombarded with the awareness that all this is consuming uh, natural resources i'm sure those yeah. people won't do it there are people who have the money and yet they don't spend it the way they so i think awareness is important but not just to the rich and the famous but also to the poorest of the poor because i told you everybody's vote is one everybody each. is only yeah, one each so that awareness yeah. definitely important conservationist also can do many things one important thing that they have to do is give importance to the government don't ever say that government is useless and that's why we are there we call ourselves non governmental organization 
and we will help you save the planet that the government is not able yeah. to it's impossible it has to the go forest, hand in hand the forest department is funded by the government all our forests yeah. are being protected by the forest department ngos are able to do something because the forest is existing if the forest department wasn't there the forest would have gone all that would have been golf course or big uh, right. multi story buildings okay or mm-hmm. mines mm-hmm. by now so it is the government is equally responsible you cannot say that i will create a beautiful world without the government so the ngos have to understand that they have to look at what the developmental plan of the country is try and okay uh, work with the government to improve the the quality of work that the government does the problem with the government normally is that because you have a large country quality suffers because you give out a direction in a well meaning direction but by the time it reaches to the end user the quality goes so ngos have to be the oil in the machinery so because yeah. ngos are small they can focus on small problems so they work in tandem with the government and the implementation can happen with the help of the ngo so that the block officers and officers on the ground will do go, good work and they will uh, the corruption and all that will automatically go down if oh, there are more eyes to it so that is very important secondly working with communities you have to work with local communities and see i told you all the slides that i showed there is dependence this was, this was my next question sir you know you, you beautifully explained about the native com- community which don't have place in urban world they have uh-huh. been there you know all the time so uh-huh. be, if they educating and they understanding that you know the tiger is not their enemy uh, and a tiger coming in and thriving on their cattle or other things so this is something also very important and you very well mentioned in your i think so i was coming out to the, my this was my next question so very well you started with it so please go so, ahead so so communities are subsisting on the forest they are very poor marginalized they don't have medical facilities they don't have good education so how are they going to become better see you and i are talking in english in india you are not talking right. in kannada i am not talking in my mother mother tongue why because right. we have we have the privilege of studying right? Uh, right those people don't have even access to education they don't have till they reach college they don't have a lab where they can do an experiment there is one classroom with four different years which means third standard fourth fifth sixth standard all studying in one room with one teacher right. dark gloomy so uh, communities have to be empowered mm-hmm. uh, their aspirations have to be met you cannot say ke bhai you live like that i will have my lifestyle and only then we can because you destroy the forest that's why the climate change is happening no they will because they have to survive and they want to be me so ngos have to work with the communities they have to understand what the community culture is they have to learn mm-hmm. from the community they have to enable them to do things rather than saying that i am anish anderia i am telling you this is what you have to do no you work with them understand what they do then right. co create co curate a strategy which right. takes into consideration their strengths because what happens is if i do what i do well and i tell them learn computer become a carpenter become a mechanical uh, a mechanic or drive mm. a car they are agriculturist try and improve their Uh, understanding of agriculture so that they don't waste water while they are agricul uh, where they are planting because many of our crops are being grown with too much of water and that is not required because they are pumping water from the ground and they are just keeping it on all throughout the day so all that water is wasted and it gets evaporated finally so right. to change the agriculture practices so that their yield goes up so that their effort for that yield goes down so that they have extra time to do other things and build capacity so right. that they can grow forest on their agriculture field and earn from that so ngos have to work and help them become better and more efficient and more aware farmers rather than making a farmer into a driver and destroying his life by uh, you know sitting in bombay driving a bloody rickshaw and uh, getting cancer by the time they are 25 60 years old right so right. that is therefore very important so government ngos communities they all have to work but it is a responsibility of the ngo because the government communities are there already and because right. there are they are not doing what they should be doing for various reasons or some of the right. reasons are unavoidable ngos are born and then ngos work on their own and they don't want to work in isolation they say ye faltu hai these people are not good no we have to work together 
and get educated as wct we have only learned uh, in the field when we have gone and interacted with people is when we have mm-hmm. only changed so my mindset as a conservationist was also different when i started 25 years ago now okay. i i know things differently how because i have seen it how people are living there and sometimes you feel guilty that you are giving this gyan to this poor people when you should actually sit with them so our strategy is very different now we sit with the people we understand what they do it is a slow process there is no quick fix the sad part about environment conservation is that it is all long term which means you cannot have it's not like a car that you can manufacture you know, you put a tire of a steering wheel and the car will be out and you can reproduce the same the look same of the car a million yeah. times mm-hmm. assembly line nature is different it's cyclical it's not linear plus uh, people are also it's about behavior of people so the behavior is influenced by many things so you cannot say that whatever a person is behaving today he will behave tomorrow as well so there will always be an up and down you cannot give up so you have to be there for the long run so the worst years you may feel rejected and say i this project will fail but actually you have to survive that you have to have the energy to stay there and live with them even if they fail it's okay it's good to try and fail rather than giving up on anything otherwise you cannot conserve you cannot create a forest i told you that you cannot grow forest forests are natural if they get cut we will only be able to grow plantations and plantations are useless because there you will not have biodiversity forest has exactly. to have biodiversity which means from the bacteria in the ground to the elephant if that is there then that forest is useful for human beings otherwise it is merely a plantation has no role to has very little role to play so anybody who is cutting a forest has to be stopped and uh, in a way if if through legal manner through education and all the degraded forests have to be brought back with the help of communities and some government funding so that the forests go up because india will need nearly 33% of our area under quality forest if we have to sustain almost 1.4 billion people otherwise there will be law and order situation there will be huge amount of social unrest that we are seeing so we we keep talking about nationalism we keep talking about terrorism all that is an offshoot of people who are not able to earn money some of us who are not able to earn money and are docile we will suffer mm-hmm. some who are aggressive will take the gun in their hands and take the money mm-hmm. away from others right so right so the root for terrorism and nationalism also is is lying somewhere in uh, in the way they feel marginalized so i think communities are extremely important and that we must have we have to we have to understand their perspective because we have gone to college and we talk all these things they haven't got that so they may talk things which are anti government or it could also mean anti environment but they don't have the benefit of understanding these things however that traditional knowledge is huge so you need to give and take learn from them give them something once they have confidence in you they will align because they know that more than us they need the forest because see you and i can buy a bisleri uh, 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 bottled water we right. and we can buy food from uh, malls they are not they have to have uh, the river water that is running they need water from their bore well so they right. know that the forest is more important to them than to anybody else so we that's i think it's a long answer that i gave but it's important that uh, we understand that no but you know the 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 details and the nuances are very important uh, when we talk about these things and most of the times when we uh, over you know it's as an outlook you don't understand how detailed things are and how well they are interconnected um and and you know going ahead um i would like to ask you that you know what are the ways uh, we can improve our scientific research aspects you know i'm sure that there could be diseases i'm sure there could be infectious diseases running into uh, wild animals which can be contagious or which can be genetic or things like that and also research helpers in preserve a lot of things so uh, by and large how scientific research can go hand in hand with the conservation no i and think how important has, it is no no it is most important because all the knowledge that we have gathered in the last 40 50 years is why we are able to even sustain a country like india by now right. we would have already had all the problems and we would have been a uh, refugees in some other country we would have also left the country so exactly. research is important but research now with covid and with all these zoonotic diseases is even more is pointing fingers at the way we are treating forest so we need to understand how our economy 
and the and the need to keep a gdp at a certain level or a growth rate at a certain level is impinging upon the forest so that study and how that connects to climate change how zoonotic diseases are an offshoot of forest degradation all those detailed research studies not only in india but global is going to help uh, conservation so i think research has i mean there is no two way about it but i am also saying that we already know so much we don't have to really know so much in detail like we know you and me that if we jump from the 10th floor we will die right you don't need to do research now yeah to know what will happen right whether your leg will break or your spinal cord will break or your neck will break when you jump from the 10th floor now that we don't need to know right we are going to mm-hmm. die so in the same way you do need research but research which is implementable not academic research which means not trying to find out number of hair on the tail of the tiger that could also be a research project right. or how many uh, uh uh you know insects are there in the ears of an elephant somebody can go and study that but that mm-hmm. is not going to translate into conservation so now when you do research it has to be more a uh, field application oriented conservation oriented research so that both people and uh, wildlife can coexist in, on the planet and also uh, research to improve our infrastructure so that all our future infra- infrastructure which means roads which means buildings which means anything can be improved upon so that they don't consume so much electricity so if our buildings are made properly and we can use natural light we can use breeze uh, then what will happen is and if we can make it in with material that can go back into the soil then that we will not be dependent on uh, river mining we will not go and collect sand from the rivers we will not uh, cut trees or we will not have too many air conditioners because the breeze is good enough or the light is good enough so we won't have what we have done is we moved from con- uh, incandescent bulbs to led and we say we are saving but we don't need led also <laughs> if the light is there so first we'll b- build a building which is glass then we will uh, put uh, shutters inside so that the light doesn't come in so glass building is bad for india it is for temperate world where the temperatures are low and they need like a pressure cooker so they have this glass and you know there are various reasons of insulation whereas here mm-hmm. we need a f- mud houses therefore we cannot have these skyscrapers all the time we will have to give mm-hmm. up on them there is no big deal why do you have to have the tallest skyscraper in india so we have to Not ask either. those questions so we, if we build locally if we build in a way that is uh, nature friendly we may not have big buildings but we will have buildings which will not destroy the forest right so that research so all your research should be directed at either fighting climate change improving livelihood options or uh, incre- improving the infrastructure so that the infrastructure doesn't uh, become detrimental to nature right um moving forward the one last question that you know how we can um what what we can do to save the lesser known cat uh, species you know wild cat species the, the the smaller ones mostly so See, because they are also very shy in nature you can't spot them very easily so what can we do uh, in in conserving them so i uh, see you don't need to see them to protect you many people have not seen yeah. the leopard or the tiger or the snake but the snake gets protected right and you have snakes right. in in the city also so it's not about seeing them it is simple where are they found they are found in different ecosystems what are those ecosystems not just forest so tigers live in forests and so if you protect the forest you have tigers will get conserved but cats mm-hmm. are found in different areas so there are some cats which are found in deep forests there are some cats like caracal that are found in grasslands there are jungle cats mm-hmm. that are found alongside villages there are rusty spotted cats which is the smallest cat of india found mm-hmm. uh, in drier areas and also uh, even in wet areas but along the periphery of the forest right. uh, then you have ca- uh, lynx that fo- is found in trans himalayas up so different cat species live in different habitats from snow capped mountains like the snow leopard to the tiger or the leopard in mm-hmm. uh, uh, evergreen forest but so you need to protect different habitats like grasslands are equally important wetlands are important fishing cats are found there so in wetlands right. in west bengal lot of these areas also in bitterkanika odisha also in uh, so those areas are extremely good for them but they are under constant fisheries people are finding and thinking of them as a 
enemy of the fishermen because they are eel they sometimes come and catch the fish that is caught in the net but oh. all i'm saying is just protecting the forest is not enough for protecting cats small cats are found in different habitats and all those habitats grasslands especially very very important because some of our rarest cats live there and so mm -hmm. habitat conservation is cat conservation because habitat will have prey and prey you need like mice and birds uh, and other animals that the smaller animals can eat now for that you need good ecosystems simple what we did for tigers we have to do but in other ecosystems right it's not only forest but the extension of it yes so thank you dr anish you know it was pleasure having you and wonderful insights given and i think it will change the way uh, we look into the forest and its conservation so thank you from tiger protection society and we hope to be connected with you in future oh i'm i'm grateful to you that you allowed me to speak about the topic that is so dear to me because uh, you know people like me who are working a day in and out in the jungle also need to interface with the common man because right. that is human beings also because just doing what we do is not enough we need to spread awareness and this opportunity uh, that uh, the tiger protection society has awarded me is uh, i'm grateful to it and i i hope that uh, the audience who is listening to us uh, you know change a bit their lifestyles exactly. need to improve become much more greener they need to respect the passion that their children have because some of these young people want to do something in nature parents feel that no how will you earn money so you have to do either engineering or you have to become a doctor not required right. so i am from institute of chemical technology it's the best institute that does chemical engineering in the country what i did was after that i have not under single penny from my phd that i did and i'm conserving right. wildlife and i'm doing very well so right. as a profession also wildlife is not a wrong thing in fact don't stop people from following their passion if they are passionate they will never feel dejected about the losses that they make they will be because their passion will compensate for all the defeats that they face in life so uh, that is one message that i would give our listeners uh, and young people follow your heart and if you love nature nothing like it you will be you are blessed because you will be able to give back to nature every breath you are taking every time you are breathing you are breathing 20000 times a day uh, all those breaths uh, are coming free of costs from nature and right. by working for conservation you are trying to repay it you will not be able to repay it but at least it's better than not working for it so all the best to you and you don't have to be a professional conservationist like me you could be wherever whatever you do but you can have a lifestyle which doesn't eat into the environment and that is your biggest contribution so all the best to you and i hope we have a healthy planet and a healthy human race as well but for that we need all the biodiversity that the planet has millions of species that live on this planet also need to coexist with us otherwise we'll be lonely and then we'll be finished right sir you know thank you it's a fantastic message that you know everybody can contribute uh, you need not be a conservation uh, a conservationist like you to contribute to nature and that's something that we should do uh, you know on day to day basis so thank you once again sir from the tiger protection society it was wonderful having you pleasure 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 sakib all the best to you thank you sir